What's up guys, Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 15. As we already know, this week is your midterm and of course your final mix down. And I want to go ahead and share with you guys a technique that you guys might like to use. So go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. All right guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session brought up right now. Now if you don't have a Pro Tools session brought up, don't worry about it. All you need to do is take plenty of notes and apply this information as soon as you get the chance. What we're going to be learning today is how to use Elastic Audio in Pro Tools, which is a very handy tool to use. Essentially what it's going to allow you to do is change the tempo of a particular region without affecting its pitch. So maybe you have a region that's maybe at a different tempo of your overall project. You're going to be able to go ahead and change that and have it fit and make it work. And it's uh, pretty fun, it's pretty easy, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Uh, so what we're going to do right now to begin is we're going to bring in a new loop. And just to let you know, it, this particular project is uh, at BPM 120. Okay, so we're going to bring in a tempo or uh, you know region or loop at a different uh, tempo so that we can go ahead and use it for this purpose. So I'm going down to File, Import, Audio, and I'll go ahead and select uh, this one right here. Hit Add go to done. It gives me a couple options here. I do want it as a new track and it's okay if it actually the location is uh, the beginning of this uh, particular session. So I'll hit OK and here's our region. I'm gonna go ahead and select the right tool to drag this over. Got my grabber tool moving it over and as you can see I created a little loop area right here and we could even see that this um, particular loop ends a little too soon. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, you know stretch this out without affecting its pitch so that it actually works with this particular project. So let's go ahead and hear how it sounds, which of course is not going to sound great because it's at different BPMs, so we'll hear how horrible it sounds. So as you could tell, it was way off beat. Uh, the loop that I brought in was happening way too quick, but we'll go ahead and fix that right now. So I want you to go to the particular track uh, that you want to go ahead and affect uh, with uh, uh, audio uh, or elastic audio and we'll go ahead and get started. So go to this drop down menu right here. It says track options. You'll select that. And right here we have what, what it says elastic audio. Now every single region will have to be affected differently. For example, if you're you know maybe working with guitars or maybe multiple vocal type of thing, you might want to use polyphonic. Okay, it's a different algorithm to use. It'll actually, uh, Pro Tools is going to go ahead and use Polyphonic to analyze that particular region that you're bringing in if, if it's something that has, you know, multiple sounds. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, the use for Polyphonic. Now for Rhythmic would be something that's percussive, something like a drum loop. Uh, that's what you would want to use. And we're actually going to use this one. Uh, monophonic is for something that has single notes in a lot of them, something like a bass line or maybe like a one person singing a rap or something like that. You want to go ahead and uh, you know, mess with the audio and kind of fine tune things. You use monophonic and various speed would work very much like monophonic. It's just a different algorithm. So let's go ahead and select rhythmic. Awesome. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to go, go ahead and uh, enlarge this uh, view for us a little bit so that we can see things a little bit easier. I'm going to go back to this drop down, go to track height, go to, uh, let's go to large, It'll probably work fine. And I'm going to go ahead and just move this up a little bit because I prefer it to be up there. Okay, cool. Now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to want to go ahead and uh, change from waveform to analysis. Now what analysis is going to do, it's going to go ahead and analyze all the transients and set up markers and uh, you know the right positions and actually Pro Tools does a fantastic job with this and it does it very quickly so let's go ahead and select it right now. Now we can see all of our new transient markers and we're able to like move these around or if we want to go ahead and uh, you know add a few in particular places let's say like right here uh, we could by uh, hitting control click and adding one or we can go ahead and remove one whatever we want to do but you know what Pro Tools does an excellent job so we're just going to leave it as is okay. Now that we've done that, the next thing that we're going to want to do is go over to Clip. And what we could do easily, uh, an easy thing that we could do is we can go ahead and just uh, make it match the tempo by going to Clip, going to uh, Conform to Tempo, and we'll just easily see it match up nice and easy. So now it's, it's done that hard work for us, and the loop should work. So let's go ahead and play it back and see how it sounds.
So it sounds pretty cool. Uh, and it actually, it now fits the actual project. So uh, that would probably be the end of it, but there's a few more things that you could actually do with Elastic Time. So let's go ahead and explore that, okay? Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to where it says options, or actually event, pardon me. And we're gonna go to event operations, go to quantize, okay? And we're gonna get a couple different options here, actually some really great options. Uh, you can go ahead and select the note value. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at a 30 second note. And you'll see these markers move around a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. What it did is quantize this audio so that it's uh, absolutely on the beat every single time. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Now the next thing that we could do is we can go ahead and move these uh, markers around. But first what we're going to need to do is go back to this little area right here where the drop down was. Actually, it might be under analysis now. And we're going to go to warp. So we're going to go ahead and warp this out. Uh, pretty cool. You'll see a bunch of new little markers here. And make sure you you know deselect grid and go to slip mode. And uh, since all the regions are, are selected, go ahead and select outside of that region. Um, let me go ahead and switch my tools around. Uh, and now we're going to be able to go ahead and individually move these markers wherever we like. See how uh, this little uh, directional you know, left or right type of thing popped up. This is going to allow us to go ahead and move these regions however we like. Uh, so let me go ahead and move that back. Let's say if I want to go ahead and make this longer, I can go ahead and do that or shorten it up. And if you see it go red, that means that it's reaching its extremes and will give you kind of like a pretty original sound. So you might want to mess around with that a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, just kind of uh, move these around just a little bit so we have different, you know, feels and vibes going on for this loop. Okay, so we can hear the differences. And a couple more. So, oops, back. Okay, cool. So we're kind of just moving things at random. We'll go ahead and play this loop back. And what I want you to do is go ahead and experiment with uh, all these techniques and, uh, you know, get a result that you like. That's what it's all about is kind of, uh, you know, getting these tools and pushing them to the extreme to create original sounds. So let's see how this sounds. All right, guys, so you guys could tell that didn't sound super great, but what you want to do is you really want to work on, you know, moving these parameters around, kind of tweaking things out, experimenting, and having fun. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys found this useful, and of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course, it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now, don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now, if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now, if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process, uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% higher in success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.